Hello everybody, today I'm going to attempt my first ever vehicle tour and today we're going to be touring my dad's 2009 Toyota Sienna minivan. This is the Limited, which is actually the, uh, the top tier model of the thing. I thought a good way to start out might actually be to look at the included key. You can see here we have our lock, unlock, side doors, the back which you have to hold down, and the alarm. Nothing on the back of it. And there is the ignition key itself. Now, I'm trying not to get the license plate in the frame. My flexibility here is a little limited because we're on vacation, so I don't really have the materials to cover those up. It's a good overview of the outside of the van. We'll head around to the back. That's a lot of the junk I had to take out of it. And there's a good look at the back. And half of the back. Now, I thought a fun thing to include also before we head inside would be to show off the headlights as well. This van has the upgraded LED headlights and hopefully I've just activated them. Can't really tell too much during the day what exactly they do, but this is a bit fancier than the stock headlights. Now we'll go ahead and head inside and take a look at the driver's area. First of all, on the side, we have our window controls, lock, uh, window locks, uh, the door handle, the seat controls located right on the front door, like most of these newer Toyota models. I know the newer Avalons do that too. Got a nice hefty sized sun visor here, capable of flipping around. But when you flip it around, it does not latch on to anything. And unlike some Toyotas, you don't have the second one you can pull down in front. Oops, hit the camera. The second one you can pull down in front as well. Anyway, moving on. Oh, by the way, there's a the mirror. Hi. Moving on, we have the uh, mirror controls here. Now, this is a really neat feature that I'll demonstrate in a moment. Mirror flip. Okay, when I was making the video, I realized I didn't demonstrate the flip-out mirrors at any point. So, we're just going to go ahead and do that real quick here. So, you see, you press this button right here. The mirrors automatically fold in to make parking easier. We'll watch that one here. I'll press the button again. And they fold right back out. Uh, the rear vent controls. You can adjust the angle of the headlights here, which is a really handy little feature. A few other controls down there. I can disable certain automatic doors. And a nice sized pocket on the door, including a cup holder. There's a lot of cup holders in here, so you can see, count them, there's one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sorry about going upside down, eight, and nine. Nine that I could just think of off the top of my head. And here in the center, oh, I guess I should finish with the steering wheels, get a quick look around here, no reason to go into a huge amount of detail, except for this. This is a very interesting feature of the car, which is the laser-guided cruise control. That actually allows you to set the cruise control, and the car will detect that there's another vehicle in front of you and automatically slow down. It can even, or it actually has the capabilities of hitting the brakes as well. You can set your follow distance with this little switch, turn it on and off here. You can go up and down by increments of five when you're using it. This, phone, uh, this car is also equipped with a uh, Bluetooth, uh, whatever you call that, a cell phone over the car speakers thing. I can't think of the exact name for it. It's my lovely name. Uh, also, press to talk, which does a bunch of things, including the built-in GPS, which I'll demonstrate later. Volume controls for the stereo on the phone. Uh, don't remember what these two do. You have to forgive me. This is not my car. Down here, we have the parking brake. Simple enough to use. Gas and brake. Sienna. Not tremendously fond of uh, transmission on this thing. This thing's a little bit awkward to use. Uh, the light controls are here. We got a pretty good amount of light in this thing when you turn them all on. Uh, let's see, you got the flashers, a whole bunch of things up here not really worth going into, but I'll just show you. They even give you a little space to keep the manual in this little black bag. Look compartment there. Now let's go ahead and listen to this thing start up. I'll stick the camera outside of the car so you can hear it. Actually, no, the door is open. You probably want to watch the dashes and everything come on. Get a look at these while they're lit up. Panel up there. 
GPS, which, oops, is in night vision mode because I have the headlights on. There's day vision. We can do without the air conditioning blasting in my face. Um, what else is there exactly to show up here? Got a excellent stereo, have the of which is on AM over. mode. Not really too useful there. All sorts of things you could do. As I said, we have a built-in uh, GPS function, if I can figure out how to... Again, please forgive me, this is not my car. Okay, you get out of it by pressing the map button. Again, I spent a pretty good amount of time behind the wheel of this thing, but I by no means drive it every day. And uh, I got all your different options along here for uh, what type of audio you feel like listening to. You can adjust the tilt of the screen by pressing that button. I didn't like it like that. Um, you do have a, a digital thermostat climate control system in here. Seat heaters for both of the front seats. That's really about all there is to see up here, I suppose. So let's move elsewhere. Close the front door. Now, this car does come complete with automatic doors. You can activate them by the key, which I'm not going to bother demonstrating. And there's also a panel up above that I forgot to show that can activate the doors as well, as well as programming in your garage doors at home. Now, I mean, many vehicles, especially minivans, have automatic doors, but I consider this to be kind of an annoying gimmick that Toyota built in. When you pull the door handle, it activates the automatic door. Some people might find that useful. I just find it kind of, eh, like I said, it's, just a, it's a gimmick. It's not really useful. Got a very comfortable back row of seats in here. I know any day you ask Diesel Ducey or Andrew, you know, on YouTube, uh, he'll tell you that these are very comfortable to ride around on because in his job at the railroad, they use these things for uh, crew transportation to and from the trains and as well as other places. Oh yeah, I believe there are some more, yes, more cup holders, as if you don't have enough. You will not go thirsty in this car. There is a rear control for the air conditioning system, nothing too fancy. Set the temperature here, got your fan control and everything else, as well as four air vents up on the ceiling back here. Uh, this thing does have a built-in DVD player that, honestly, I don't even know if uh, we've really ever used. This is a company car, by the way, if I failed to mention that. So we didn't really pick out anything in this vehicle. Um, it does come equipped with window shades when you're driving, uh, I guess, in any kind of sunny conditions. Kind of rambling on here. Bottom line, very comfortable middle row. By the way, those window shades are also on the rear windows as well. Now, I guess to close out this vehicle tour, hit this button here and run, we'll go ahead and come around to the back. Now, I'm going to aim down so I don't get the license plate. Actually, I'll aim up. This has that same gimmick as well. Actually, no, opening it doesn't, closing it does. Again, sorry, I'm not tremendously familiar with this car. Now, back here, this vehicle features fold-down seats. There's one there and kind of like the combined two here for that middle seat. I'm going to go ahead and put up the larger of the two. So we'll have to start by holding down this button, and the seat will raise right out of the ground. Hold down the button until it gets there. All right. Oops. Now we'll send it. Oh, oops, that's not what I want to do. Hit this button. Okay, something's not right here. Why are you not latching on? Oh, the carpet's in the way. Okay, I don't know why the carpet's not cooperating. I don't feel like trying to shift it in the right spot, so I just peeled it back, and we'll get this another shot. So here comes the seat. It raises up, and should latch correctly, and the back comes up automatically. This thing is not behaving tonight. What's it scraping on now? Now I'll go ahead and climb in here over the seat that I didn't put up. It's worth noting that when you put the seats up, you gain a lot of storage space down in this pit. I mean, look at how much space you still have with the seat up. These pull up as well. <sighs> Headrest. Hard to get from the back. You can see the leg room is a little limited back here because these seats do actually move back and forth and they're pushed all the way back for maximum leg room there. So this isn't always as bad as it looks here. But 
It's worth noting, the back seats are not as comfortable as the middle seats, but they are by no means bad. I mean, I spent a trip back here on these before. It wasn't the least bit uncomfortable. There's a view into the whole van. So, oh, and look, more cup holders, as well as a little storage space, too. And there's a reading light back there. That's kind of interesting. Never even knew that was there. So I guess I'll go ahead and climb back out here without falling in the pit. And we'll put the seat back down. This is kind of a gimmick as well, to be completely honest. I don't really know why anyone would be too lazy to just fold the seat up on their own. This van does have quite a few gimmicks. Again, this is the the most well-equipped version of this car. So, as I straighten this out, jumper cable's there. Obviously, those didn't come with the van. Get one last look down this side. I'll demonstrate the automatic gate here. See, look at this. Actually, I'll use this little thing here. You pull down, it stops it, and forces it, or forces you to use the automatic gate. Again, not too fond of that gimmick. But as much as I've been criticizing the little gimmicks in this car, I have to say it's an excellent vehicle, very comfortable to drive, very comfortable to ride in, never given us an ounce of trouble since we've owned it. Overall, I'd have to recommend the Toyota Sienna, at least the 2009 edition. Anyway, thank you for watching my very first ever uh, car tour. I plan at least two more in the future. Hope you enjoyed it.